Hey everybody, today's Deadbot Dragon reviews will be about some Asian guys, some black guy, and a film they made together called Rush Hour 2. This happens to be my favorite film in the entire world. So, let's get to it. Damn! So, highest grossing live action martial arts film of all time, but second highest grossing martial arts non live action or live action or whatever film of all time. You know what came first? Fucking Kung Fu Panda. It's not fair! So, Rush Hour 2 came out in 2001, and I can safely say it is my favourite movie of all time. Simply for the fact that Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan go together like a hand in glove. And that is an understatement. Anybody who saw Rush Hour 1, which to be honest, I found so-so. But still pretty funny, but I found it so-so. Um, you can attest to that Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan go together like bread and butter. And yeah, and this film is absolutely amazing. It starts off with... Chris Tucker and Chan's characters, Detectives Carr and Lee, on hol on vacation in Hong Kong. I almost said holiday there. I know that some American viewers will not get what that means. Um, and then Lee obviously gets called to go undercover into a bar, which comes one of the most famous scenes out of all the movie, when Chris Tucker is secretly filmed um, dancing and doing karaoke to... Michael Jackson's um, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, which I will always remember for years and years, simply for the fact of how funny it was. And apparently Tucker was, did not allow them to film it with his knowledge, because he felt embarrassed or something, I don't know. Um, I know Michael Jackson was one of his best friends, so... But... And the other funny story about that is, because Asians and the Chinese take karaoke so seriously, a lot of them got offended and actually left the club. And that, that must have been a nightmare for filming, because, you know, the guys filming Rush Hour 2 were guests in Hong Kong, and that must have been a friggin' nightmare to explain to the Chinese people. The on-off partnership of uh, Carter and Lee during the films is actually quite comical. Uh, dissension is teased after the um, after the showdown in Hong Kong, and they they potentially fall out and whatever. But Lee brings it back by telling Carter some things about his father, and then everything moves to LA, where all, where business actually does pick up, and. There's this hilarious scene where they get captured by the villains of the film, the mobsters, and Lee and Carter are arguing in the back of a truck of statues, and these statues are full of money. And there's a particular joke about egg rolls that I need you to watch the film to quite understand. <laughs> hilarious thing about this film is uh, Chris Tucker's failed attempts at Chinese and Jackie's even more hilarious attempts to translate them and it, the responses are quite insane like you just invited everybody to get naked and sacrifice a small goat just stuff like that it just plays into the partnership really really well and it confirms that Detective Carter is a duck out of water when he's in Hong Kong just like um, Detective Lee is like a duck out of water when he's in LA. The real meat of this film is the fight slash chaos in the Red Dragon Casino, which is to be seen to be believed, but there's a there's two ma two females fighting over a gun. Jackie has a grenade strapped to his mouth with a with cellar tape that Carter has to chuck out. Um, Carter goes absolutely racial crazy on the t on top of the gambling tables, and it's just insanity. 
absolute insanity, but it's glorious and you'll love it. Which ultimately culminates in a fight between Carter and Hu Li, played by Zhang Ziyi, and it's a hell of a fight, all choreographed by Jackie Chan and his stud team. And then at the end of the movie, there's the part which uh, Chris Tucker absolutely fucking can't stand, and that's the outtakes, which make up a lot of the meat of this film. This DVD is so beautiful, isn't it? It got, it got released on DVD. Apparently it's meant to be released on Blu-ray this year around September time. Was scheduled for January, but now it's been changed to September because of delays. And so, yeah, this DVD is absolutely glorious. The amount of special features. Yeah, I'll let you get a good look. But yeah, the amount of special features on here, I mean, the making ofs are entertaining because Jackie is leading the film crew and Chris Tucker all around Hong Kong and they're experiencing things they never thought they'd experienced before. And there's stuff about the wardrobe, which is um, hosted by Jeremy Piven. And now, I can't stand Jeremy Piven to save my life. But in Rush Hour 2, he really, he really fit the role he was playing. And in that little special feature, he was actually quite entertaining. So hats off to Jeremy Piven. I fucking still hate you. Um, there's deleted scenes. Like, an alt in, among them is an alternate scene in the truck where Carter and Lee are stuck with the statues of money. And it turns into crates of money and they're still fighting and everything. Um, so... And it also has an old student film that Brett Ratner actually directed in his in his student days, obviously, called Lady Luck. And I suggest you check that out because if you want to see a silent black and white film about a female assassin, that's definitely one to watch because it was quite entertaining and it shows how much Brett Ratner has evolved as a director, as an executive producer. Also to note, among those deleted scenes is an extra set of outtakes which is just as funny as the outtakes that are at the credits of the actual film. So I suggest you check them out too. And also if you go into the chapters menu and search for a specific chapter and everything, you might find a mystery card that doesn't play a scene or anything. Two of them. And that's act those are actually Easter eggs for the Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring film that actually came out that year. So I do suggest you check them out. Um, if you haven't watched Lord of the Rings already, I suggest you get the free and DVD DVDs collection things. Just buy them, watch them, love them, love them. Look at that. Chris Tucker actually shaved for the second one. The first one, he has a beard. Third one, he has a beard. And the second one, no beard. Did he suffer beard rage at all? So, for a martial arts comedy, I'd give this 11 out of 10 if I could. And, but yeah, I'm, I'm probably a bit biased. I love this movie too much. Um, what else did I want to speak about? Yeah, the Rush Hour 1 was good. Uh, Rush Hour 3 was mediocre at best. They can't hold a candle to number two. You just can't. As far as martial arts comedies go, or sequels or prequels. Can't hold a candle to that. So I don't have high hopes for the rumoured fourth film in the series. And I did find out something today that a Rush Hour TV series was being filmed and it's actually been picked up by CBS in the States. And I'm like, well... At first, I was like, you can't do Rush Hour without Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. You just can't do it. And then I remembered, I thought you couldn't do Blade without Wesley Snipes. And then I watched Blade, the actual TV series. And I was like, yeah, I was wrong. So I'm going to watch the TV series before I judge whether it was a mistake not having Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker in Rush Hour. Because, I mean, I love, the, I love Rush Hour 2. I love the series in general. I just really hope that this TV series can knock it out of the park. Blade, the original TV series, I can give the benefit of the doubt because it actually was good for what it was. 
rush hour, I'm still a bit skeptical, but I will see how it goes. So that's it for my review of Rush Hour 2 guys, uh, if you like this video, click the like, click subscribe, click favourite, love, like, caress my channel, I'm stealing Dow's Black material now, but love, like, caress my channel, subscribe, do all that stuff, like me on Facebook, like Deadbolt Dragons on Facebook, and if you want to keep seeing these videos, I suggest you do all that, and Thank you for those of you who are actually here and are supporting me now that I'm a new YouTuber and everything. And I will have some more videos for you soon. Next in memoriam should be on the legend himself, Robin Williams. I mean, he is sorely missed and everything. And my next vlog should be coming up after that. And then after that will be my next rant video and possibly another cosplay special on one of my other cosplays. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I've been Woofy, this has been Deadbolt Dragons. Peace. <laughs>